Good day to the citizens of this world. In an astonishingly abrupt move, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe Council went rogue and voted to shut down the Camp of the Sacred Stones, the original encampment set up by indigenous youth, and to apply all funds donated in support of the camps to pay off the tribe's debts. As Ladonna Brave Bull Lallard, head of what has become known as Sacred Stone and owner of the property on which it sits, said in a statement at the council meeting today in sharp protest of the motions. This is supposed to be the time of prayer and gathering of the people to stand for the water as we fight for our water and against this billion dollar company Dakota Access Pipeline. This is the time for our nation to heal together and develop relationships with our nations and allies. This is not the time for betrayal, negotiation, nor compromise with a company that does not know honesty and will only destroy the world around you, destroy the future for our children and the world. Standing Rock Tribe Chairman Dave R. Campbell too, long believed by some to be corrupt, claimed in the meeting the camps have rampant health and hygiene issues and must be shut down. We're not sitting around taking donations, Archambault stated, addressing rumors he and other leaders had simply taken donation money for themselves, but when it comes to the tribe, this council is accountable and responsible for the members it represents, fiscally responsible. So, we've always been transparent, whenever resources come to the tribe. That assertion has been disputed by among tribal members and other water protectors who have spent time in the camps, particularly as the tribe had claimed in the past it supported opposition to the pipeline's construction. But after a chain of celebrities, a group of military veterans, and other notable people visited the camp, it seemed too much attention was drained on the tribe, and its politics. Ladonna, as she is most commonly called by water protectors, continued. By July, the call was made out for people to come help Standing Rock with the fight against Dakota Access. Thousands of people came out. The SRSD tribe then started with supplies and help at the new camp. The tribe slowly removed all fund or help with Sacred Stone Camp which was okay. We paid for our own porta potties and garbage. She added Sacred Stone had hired CPAs to manage donations, set up non-profit status for the camp, and kept track of all receipts from purchases made for winterizing and other purposes. But, as Ladonlu added, Sacred Stone continued to develop for the long term, getting ready for winter by and getting the camp prepared as we were left out of support from the tribe and the other camps, which was okay. Now. Two council members under Archambault's guidance, have proposed a tragic end to the oldest camp in Standing Rock, and the complete removal of all water protectors who have called the site home, some of them since opposition to Dakota Access began. Indeed, some water protectors gave up their lives to support opposition to Dakota Access, leaving behind jobs, friends, and, in some cases, families for months at a time. Many intended to stay for the duration, until the construction is halted. Many well-meaning outsiders have also been at least somewhat betrayed, as they would have assumed monetary contributions given in support of the camps would be applied exactly to that, not to the Standing Rock tribe to do with as it pleased. So, this sudden move, although not entirely unexpected, sends a shock to the heart of hundreds encamped at Sacred Stone and thousands more enduring the bitter and relentless North Dakota winter in several camps nearby. Archambault previously used the cover of a delay imposed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to declare, falsely, a victory over Dakota access and attempted to effect a mass evacuation of water protectors. After that announcement, the atmosphere became noticeably hostile at Standing Rock, as leaders seemed to both worry for campers' safety in the sub-zero temperatures, and resent their massive presence. Summarizing, Ladonna stated. In the meantime, 
the resistance to Dakota Access Pipeline was being in the forefront in media and the news. The violence of Dakota Access and Morton County was escalating to major injuries, arrests and attacks. We watched as the world watched as Amnesty International, ACLU, United Nations all came to record what was happening on the ground. We worked with many different media groups, including the anonymous collective, Unicorn Riot, Dean, Myron and Unicorn Riot for Media. We worked with the youth and their runs to Omaha and Washington DC. We had the world standing with us as we fought a billion dollar company. We have SRST Tribal Council making decisions about the camps and the people who came to help them. One motion made by Frank White Bull and Joe Dunn to take the camp funds for the tribal debit, and then motion made by Robert Taken Alive to close Sacred Stone Camp. I object to any decision that is made without consultation with the camps. Confirming suspicions, our camp Bald, White Bull, and Dunn have now broken the ultimate promise that opposition to the Dakota Access Pipeline would last until the Black Snake had been shut down completely, in one stunning move contrary to everything the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe claimed to hold sacred. It's imperative to note the Tribe Council isn't acting on behalf of all its members as it claims, many want all of the camps to remain in place until the permanent end to Dakota Access. However, that water is life. Iwaikoni is apparently of little concern, for a select group of people, when money and corruption instead take precedence. One of the water protectors has left a statement with the collective. We are here standing for the waters, many wholly unsupported except by the donations which were sent, meanwhile hash darpled Dave has likely embezzled millions in cash as witnessed by many who helped in the donations tent at OCT Oy8. We set aside comfort and ease, many walked away from family, jobs and retirement to join in a stand for the earth's water. Now we face attack, not only from the state government, which we have come to expect, but also from tribal government, the very same tribal government which has benefited financially from this movement in untold millions of cash donations millions more in material donations, including shipping containers still stored on Devar Campbell to land the one-time Eka village known as Hunk Papa Camp. We trusted our goodwill would be received and our physical presence appreciated by the Standing Rock Sioux tribe, we trusted that our sacrifice from Sea Maker would be a benefit to the tribe who gathers their drinking water from the Missouri River and the tribe has benefited, specifically in the form of $3.2 million of water protector donations used by the tribe to service their debt on loans to build the Prairie Nights Casino and Resort. We came by the thousands from across the country and around the world to protect the sacred waters, to defend sacred sun dance grounds, and to protect graves from desecration, in a selfless way many of us physically put our bodies on the line. Facing police brutality and state-sponsored violence from Morton County Sheriff's Department, and North Dakota National Guard soldiers following unconstitutional orders to fire chemical weapons, sonic weapons and rubber bullets into an unarmed crowd of people who were in prayer. We were made up of many social groups, students, veterans, indigenous tribes from all horizons, religious peoples of many faiths churches and nationalities, including most recently a message from the Pope. We were always unarmed, always peaceful, and most importantly we were expressing our hope through prayer, a constitutionally protected right, enshrined in the Constitution. These people came here in good faith and in solidarity with youth runners who jogged across the country, from North Dakota to Washington DC to hand deliver a petition asking that the government respect our water and intervene on behalf of the water and the future generations of people who will need safe, clean water to drink and for use in recreation and daily life. With a clear message we can't drink oil. We are still here. Those of us who saw through the many lies, the voluntary work stoppage ordered by the Obama administration, the environmental impact study ordered by the Army Corps of Engineers, the evacuation order for your safety made by the previous governor of North Dakota, and a trespass order given by the Standing Rock tribe. 
We stand in solidarity with our head woman Ladonna Tamakawa Astwin Alard, her family name Brave Bull will forever live in our hearts and lend us strength when adversity and tyrannical government looms. We will always remember her words we stand. We would like all to whom are, subscribe to Sue Tribe on Facebook. To unsubscribe to it we will provide a link below. Anonymous does not and never has promoted any forms of violence. We oppose evil, thus we do not contribute to it. We stand for love, freedom, peace, truth and anything that is good and moral. Upon reading comments, it has become very apparent that some seem to be so misguided in life that they believe it is correct to bring harm to living beings. The protectors at Standing Rock are letting their voices and intentions be heard in an attempt to save their precious land and water supply. They are peaceful protectors, and even if they were violent, which they are not, that still does not give any person the right to run them over. Violence is never the answer, and those we so greatly oppose. The corrupted, the evil, the immoral, the heartless. Crave for violence and pain on this planet and people like yourself only contribute to their evil desires. When people hurt and harm other living beings the corrupted evil elite are sitting enjoying with a great big smiles on their faces. They want death, they want destruction, they want every being apart from themselves to suffer. Without a doubt, from the comments that I have read from some it is very clear that they are lacking in compassion and understanding. If you are watching anonymous videos by a true anon if you do not support our idea and what we stand for, at the core of every true anon is a revolutionary. A true anon would never commit themselves to any evil or immoral action that is a reflection of the same corrupted system and doctrine that they oppose. Those of us that are truly awake and see with clarity fully understands that evil is evil. And it cannot, in any case, be buttered up in a false pretense to justify harm to living beings so that one's ego can feel comforted from the false impression that evil can be used as good. There are many ways to resolve issues without the use of violence and harm. Anonymous attacks issues, not people. Sincerely yours the sanitation man. We are the truth that's hiding in the dark. We are the last stand for humanity. We are your neighbors. We are humanity. We are a legion. And we are now. Expect us. It's clear that we are we are reaching further and further to a state of impasse. It's logistically impossible to get every structure out of the floodplain. And we see these measures of encroachment. Some could call it international acts of aggression. What has happened to the over 700 water protectors who've been arrested? The rights violations, human rights, civil rights, constitutional rights, and treaty rights, which have been violated. The land that we're on that the Corps claims now, from an illegal annexation and an illegal taking, that land belongs to the Great Sioux Nation. So we're going to have very tough choices to make. We have a right to be here, and I support everybody who exercises their own rights. I've been here eight months. I'm a resident here. Everybody's a resident here. This is a community now. So all you leaders, honey, long time ago when we do things, we didn't have a leader. We're all leaders here. Hello, my name is Donna Braidwell Allard. Tamakawa Shtewi, her good earth woman. I'm a world member of Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. I am standing on my home, I am standing on my river, I am standing where I grew up. Who has a right to take that from me? This morning as they issued a proposed eviction notice for me trespassing on my homeland, this will set precedents in Indian country everywhere. I hope they understand what they are doing. I hope they understand what the BIA is doing. My dad said this has always been our land, will always be our land. 
Even though the Army Corps came in and did eminent domain, it was still our land. We continue to use the land. We have continual use of my land that has never stopped. And I have to stand on that land. My dad told me, when I die, you bury me next to that Army Corps staple to remind him that this is my land. And this is what I was taught, and this is what I stand on. We have almost been to the Senate twice to get our land returned. That Iraq should try to make that their priority to have our taken land returned. Because that is our land. We could tell you the history of that land, every inch of it. I know where the Sundance grounds are. I know when they bury that medicine in the ground. I know the village sites. I know the backgrounds. This is our land. And when do we stand up for who we are? Oh, wait. Today is the day. What is the problem here? The problem is, is that LaDonna is being evicted on her own land. So you guys need to prepare. This is something that you're going to see across any... And we will never forgive. The cleansing of your kind is just started. You cannot stop the legion. We are, we are everywhere. We are in your homes listening and watching from your computers. We hear you from your cell phones. You can try and cover this up. But remember we are the internet and we'll spread the truth all across the net. You should have expected us. us. Sincerely yours. The sanitation man expects us. Special shout in high. In spirit, Operation Second. And the anonymous collective. And I have to start again. Just my children and my brother. I thank my